Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Avoiding copyright claims. Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're checking out an awesome ship from the Steam Workshop. You might recognise this as Thunderbird 2 from, of course, the Thunderbirds. <laughs> this was one of my favourite growing up TV shows, and Thunderbird 2 was actually my favourite ship within Thunderbirds, just because it had a cool utility sort of purpose. It was, it was the most versatile of all the ships. It was like the big mammoth transport ship of the unit. So let's take a look at this one. This is, of course, a small ship gone wild. We'll take a tour of the exterior, and then we'll pop in inside. Now, Thunderbird 2 has a lot of curves going on for it so that's been replicated really nicely here with this lovely curved cockpit area behind the glass of course is a beautiful cockpit room you can see me just sitting there in the seat behind to the sides we have of course the air intake this is a mixture of both hydrogen and atmospheric thrust as we come around the side here you'll notice these large elongated engine bays these are housing actual atmospheric thrusters and on the side we have ourselves these little wings now these little wings are designed to fold up and down for storage so you can see the wings fold up and down there very cool indeed get a better view of that for you because i don't think these wings are really going to do that much <laughs> in reality but they are really cool. We can lock them wings off as well with our rotor locks. And as we come around the back, we've got a warning jet blast sign. Some more hydrogen thrusters. And we've got the rear wing over here. This rear wing creating probably the most lift over the little two wings to the side. You can see the thrusters around the back there. They've got that curved rear compartment. So now that our character has been activated, we actually have three entrance points. We have the little hatch on the top that we can pop here. That'll take us straight to the bridge. And if you do remember from the TV series, they have a little chute that slides the puppets down into this hatch and into the main seat for quick access. But we won't be entering from there for the moment. Now, coming down the side, we have an entry hatch on either side just like this. So if we activate our legs and we enter in through here, just take a look at this beautiful interior for a small ship. If you're doing a small ship gone wild, this is the sort of interior you're aiming for. You've got the little green contrasting blocks on the side. You've got these little piping decorations. We've got an entryway into, I'm guessing, a little briefing room aboard Thunderbird 2 or additional transport personnel. I never really saw the, the internals of Thunderbird 2 apart from the cockpit. Apart from some episodes, so you can see there's a little warning on the survival kit here, making it survival friendly. Coming down here, we have access to the actual pod itself. So this is the rear pod. It is completely empty, but you can see by the scale of me, you could fit a nice rover in here. And I think this design does work quite well for some little survival scenarios and whatnot. So we'll just jetpack ourselves back through. Pop that door closed, seal that up. And then we also have a little bit of a piston here. Now, this piston actually pushes up a lift that's upstairs. But to get there, we're going to access this little access ladder, turn ourselves around, and now we're on the bridge. Look at this bridge. Lovely curved shaped with these reinforcements to it. We've, of course, got the top hatch to blow like that. And then we've got an elevator here as well, so we can raise ourselves out of the top hatch. This comes in sort of a, apparent when the ship needs rescuing in some of the scenarios. I believe Thunderbird 2 crashed into the ocean at one point. And um, you come up through this little hatch, like so. So we can lower that back down. We can seal our rescue hatch back up. Now here we have a red alert. I remember seeing this red alert from the series when they're about to crash, heavily damaged. They're coming into the runway, everything's flashing. So we can disable that right there. Very, very cool indeed. And then as we come over to this area, we have the main cockpit. The cockpit seats actually have quite a good view from a confined cockpit like this. Quite nice. Let's take it in for a landing and show you off some of these controls. So first off, we have the front forward facing camera. The ship does have a little bit of a power deficiency, but you just have to take that in consideration when you come in to land. So the first thing we're gonna do is activate number six. That brings our landing legs down. If we were gonna land on the belly, that would be fine. But this is so we can eject the pod. So they are now ready to lock and we are gonna drop the pod down. We're not on a perfectly flat surface here. So it's gonna be a little bit spicy. Okay, just pop ourselves out of the seat and pop ourselves back in. Okay, and then make sure that we're not wiggling too much and we're going to unlock our landing gears. Like so, you can see that the pod has been dropped and we're going to bring ourselves up. Let's make sure all landing gears are unlocked. 
legs are retracted and now we've dropped the cargo we could go back and get another module oh no it's the cargo pod <laughs> the cargo pod's running away we should have put a handbrake on the wheels wheels have gone i can't hold her and we're gonna have to chase it down there hopefully it doesn't come under too much damage i don't think we're gonna be able to pick this up and stop it uh, maybe we could a activate our landing legs this was not part of the video oh i did not expect it to be going down this hill oh please don't break apart i've got so many things to show the show them with the cargo pod Okay, it looks like it might be stopping. We'll activate our cargo leg if we can. Oh, we're still chasing that pod down. <laughs> Let's hop on the ship there for a second, and we'll pop out for the emergency hatch and see if we can stop it. Oh, we've activated the emergency hatch too quick. We're just pushing our head right through it. Okay, so this is the cargo pod here that obviously has some wheels that require a handbrake. But you can access the cargo pod from the front here. And if we do so, maybe, just maybe, we can stop this thing. Oh, there we go. Parking brake engaged. Perfect. That's what we should have done beforehand. Then if we come to the front of the pod, we actually have a reverse and a lock. And we can drop our cargo pod down. I really like the idea of having a door within your door. It just makes it quite fun. For loading on up. So a nice little ramp cargo container there. We can even put a rover inside there. There's no ways to lock it down inside here. I'm guessing you could have some landing gears or locks on the rover or whatever you're transporting. So we'll bring our door back up. Once we've brought it all the way back up, we'll lock it in place. Okay, and lock. Let's exit our hatch. Have a look at the externals of the container. So we've got the two on the door. Nice bit of detailing. Very simple sort of container. And if we access ourselves back inside, we'll pop that cargo hatch open. If we can. There we go. We'll go back down. This sort of hatch is really useful for a survival scenario as well. I think some more sh small ships gone wild should have a hatch that just gets you straight into the bridge. It saves so much time. And then let's bring ourselves back over. This is going to be a little bit more difficult here. So I don't know if we've got a ton of front thrust. And we're going to retract our legs to make it a little bit easier. Bring ourselves over as much as we can. Okay, and now once we're over... We want to carefully navigate ourselves into a position where we're not catching that pod with our legs. Okay, that's looking good. Let's bring ourselves back down. We'll engage our, our lock, and then it's just a shimmy job of trying to get this back in without causing any damage to the pod or the ship. So just gentle little thrusts. Let's get our uh, landing gears retracted further. Then we can clip this into place. It should be clipping any moment right now. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. That just shows how functional a design like this could be, as well as looking so nice. Let's have a look at the handling and maneuver. Apart from the power issue, we can maneuver quite well. Got a little bit of clanging out there. The wings come into their own, looking really cool as we move around. We've got really good acceleration, though, for a ship of this size. What's our the acceleration like? Yeah, quite good. Even though I didn't see Thunderbird 2 go up to space within the series, I reckon in this ship could quite possibly do so so let's bring this video to an end here now this is a fantastic creation it seems very functional for such a beautiful design as well you could easily use something like this in your survival scenario hopefully this utilitarian thunderbird 2 design has also give you some inspiration for your own so ender you've done a fantastic job and don't forget to check out the rest of their creations in the link in the description below that'll take you to this one and then you can of course scroll across and see what else ender's been up to anyway Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.